Hi, my name is Sarah and I have Graham here with me today. Say hi, Graham. Hi. And we're going to tell you all about the musculoskeletal system. Are you ready, Graham? Yeah. Okay. And once again, if you have any questions for us, uh, please feel free to send me an email. If you have any questions about being a scientist or anything about this presentation, uh, feel free to email me. And I have the email address right here, sarah.gundy at nyy.ie. So there's two parts to our video. The first part is a talk. And then uh, after our talk, we have an optional presentation about how to do an activity, uh, which will teach you how to use biomaterials to fix a broken tendon. But first, we have to teach you a bit about uh, your bones and your muscles and what a tendon actually is. So Graham, when you hear the word musculoskeletal, what does that make you think of? Your muscles on your skeleton? Exactly. Uh, your muscles and the bones in your skeleton. Uh, so your musculoskeletal system, it's saying exactly what it means. It's referring to the muscles, your bones, but it also includes your cartilage, your joints, your ligaments, and your tendons. Now, your joints, uh, connect your bone to your bone and your tendons connect your muscles to your bone. So here we have a diagram of your skeleton and you can see you have bones everywhere in your body. And Graham, can you tell me what the longest bone in your body is? Your femur and your upper leg. That's exactly right. Your femur and your upper leg, uh, that's the biggest bone in your body. But what about the smallest bone in your body? Where do you think that is? Um, it's a bone in your ear. Yes, exactly. It's a teeny tiny little bone in your ear. Now, how many bones do you have? Well, it changes throughout your lifetime. Uh, so when you're born, you have 300 bones. But then by the time you get to be an adult, you have 206. Isn't that weird? <laughs> There's a duck there because he wants to know where all the bones went. <laughs> Do you know where all the bones went, Graham? Uh, uh, they merge into each other? Exactly. They kind of grow into one another. Uh, so. For you out there, uh, maybe you have a little baby brother or sister or cousin, and when they're very, very small, uh, you're always warned not to touch the top of their head. And that's because there's what's called a soft spot on top of their head. And this is where the bones of their skull have not fused or glued together. So there's actually no protective cover of bone there to protect their brain. And when babies reached about 18 months old, uh, the bones in their skull will have fused together and they will no longer have that soft spot. So the answer, and because that duck wants to know, is the bones fuse together and they combine to form larger bones. So bones have some functions, some of them which you can guess, but some of them you may not have realized. So I have all four of them listed there. The first one, bones give structure and support. And that's a more obvious one. If you did not have your bones in your body, you'd just be a big blob. Okay. That would be no fun. And the second function bones do is they provide movement. You would not be able to move without your bones. And the third thing, bones protect vital organs inside your body that need protection. Uh, for example, your ribs surround your lungs so you're able to breathe properly. And Graham, can you think of any other 
bones that might protect another organ in your body? Your skull. Yes, exactly. Your skull protects your brain. And did you know your brain is really, really soft? And if you were to put your finger on a brain, it would actually feel like toothpaste. It's that soft. So you need the skull to protect that soft brain. And the last one is that your bones make blood cells. You may have heard of blood cells before. You have white blood cells and red blood cells, and they're all manufactured within the insides of your bones. So, bones are unable to move by themselves. Muscles move the bones and they do this by shortening. And we call this contracting, like a muscle contraction. And muscles can only pull the bones. They're not able to push bones. So because they can only pull, muscles tend to occur in pairs. And we refer to this as working in opposition. And on our next slide, we're going to test some of our muscles work in opposition, okay? So we're going to lift up our arm. Graham, maybe you can do this for me with your right arm. Surgeon. Yep, that's exactly right. And so up here, do you know what this is? What muscle is this on the top? You can contract it, make it really, really hard. Okay, you can do this at home as well. Now, as you bend your elbow, which muscle is contracting? Um, I don't know. It's a bicep. The bicep is on top. And you can feel it shortening because it should be very, very hard. So you can try that at home. Lift up your arm and really flex that muscle as hard as you can. And that's your bicep contracting, okay? But then when you straighten your arm, yeah, the opposite muscle is working instead. So underneath here, you have what's called a tricep. Okay, and you can feel your own tricep on, on the bottom of your arm. And that means the tricep is contracting as you straighten your arm. So when you flex your elbow, your bicep is contracting. When you straighten your arm, your tricep is contracting. And we call this working in opposition. The biceps work in opposition to your triceps. <laughs> I won't make him hit himself. <laughs> so these muscles have to connect to the bones somehow, and they do this through tendons. And here I have a diagram of all the tendons that are in your hand. And your hands have lots of tendons in them. And if you look at your hand, uh, you can see some of these tendons. And we're going to do a little experiment. So what we're gonna do now is check if you have this tendon in your wrist, and this tendon is called a palmaris longus. So some people have it and some people don't, okay? So Graham, what you're gonna do, take your mm -hmm. hand, okay? And you touch all your fingertips up against your thumb, and then you're going to bend your wrist towards your forearm, okay? And then you look down on it and see if you can see this tendon popping up between the palm of your hand and your forearm. I don't have it. You do have it. I don't see it. There it is. It's popping oh. up. I can see it. He has it. <laughs> so most people will have this tendon, but 14% of people will not have this tendon. And what happened about 20, 30,000 years ago, this tendon was used to flex your wrist or bend your wrist forward and backwards. But as people evolved, it was no longer needed. And some people don't even have it anymore. They kind of evolved not to have one. And if you have one, if you damage a tendon anywhere else on your body, this can actually be removed and used to replace your damaged tendons. So if you do not have it, you could actually say you're more evolved than the rest of us. Uh, so a fun trick you can do is go ask your parents, hey, do you have a palmaris longus? 
And if they don't have it, you can tell them, ah, well, you're just more evolved than the rest of us. Now, sometimes in your musculoskeletal system, things can go wrong. Things do get damaged, especially uh, if you're playing sports or exercising, but that's okay. We have ways to fix that. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is broken bones. And you can see in the picture, a picture of this broken bone here with the green arrow pointing to it in the hand. And I know you have probably broken some bones during your life. And so think about how did you break your bone and what did the doctors do to fix that broken bone? Yeah, uh, did you get a cast or a plaster? Did you have to have surgery? Uh, did they put metal pins inside or maybe some screws? Or sometimes they even put plates inside the body to help secure the bones. Um, think about it. And so all these different things that are used to fix broken bones are considered medical devices. Okay, they're devices used to help your body heal itself. Okay, so many medical devices are used to help fix broken bones. Okay, and if you want to, I always love to hear people's stories. Uh, so you can email me how you broke your bone and what the doctors did to help that bone heal. So it's not just bones that can be broken. Sometimes tendons can be broken too. So you have this tendon, it's really big. It's the biggest tendon in your body. It's called the Achilles tendon and it's in your heel. And sometimes this can get damaged. Maybe some of you have damaged this Achilles tendon and we need to find out a way to heal those tendons as well as the bones. Okay, so biomedical engineers, they create devices to heal these broken tendons. So that's the end of our talk. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me at sarah.gundy at nuigalway.ie. And if you want to, you can continue on with the presentation and we'll teach you how to use biomaterials to fix a broken tendon. Biomedical engineering can be used to help fix broken tendons and broken bones. And biomedical engineering is when engineering and medicine come together to help improve people's health. Now with this activity, you will be a biomedical engineer to repair a damaged tendon. So in your downloadable lesson plan, you will find a diagram of a hand. Now you can ask your mom or your dad to print out that hand for you. And this is going to be your hand, which you're going to do your biomedical engineering on. Okay, so you will also need some cut up pieces of straws that are gonna act like your bones and long pieces of string, which are gonna act like your tendons. So you're going to start off with one finger and this finger is going to get three small pieces of cut up straw that are gonna act as the bones. And then the finger is going to get one long piece of string that reaches from the tip of the finger past the wrist of the hand. Now, very importantly, when you tape down those pieces of straw to the hand, you have to leave enough spaces in between the straws. Okay, this will become important later on when you're doing your surgery to fix your tendons. The next step is you're going to tape the end of the string to the tip of the finger. Okay, so that red area of the fingers, do not actually get a bone in it in the activity. That is where your string is gonna be taped to the finger, okay? And you're also going to tape the three pieces of straw to three pieces of bone on the hand. Very important, once again, do not tape the string, otherwise your hand won't move properly. 
Now, once you're done taping the pieces of straw down to the bones, you're going to bend the paper in between the straws, and this will make the finger easier to move. And when you've completed this, uh, this is what your finished hand will look like. And it, the bones don't have to be color coordinated, so you can use whatever color straws you wish. And you can do one finger or you can do all five fingers. But just notice if you do the thumb, uh, the thumb only has two pieces of straw as opposed to three pieces of straw uh, in the other four fingers. Okay, so that looks like your completed hand right there in the picture, hopefully. The next step is for you to damage and repair one of the tendons in your hand. And this is why I wanted you to keep enough space in between your straws uh, because you're going to take your scissors and cut the string to act, act like you're damaging one of your tendons. And once you make that cut, you're gonna repair this tendon using any sort of materials you think would be appropriate in your house. Okay, so there's no wrong answer to this. You can use a paper clip, a, a pipe cleaner, a rubber band, a lollipop stick. Think about what material would be best to fix that tendon in order to make that hand function properly again, okay? Do you want your finger to stay stiff or do you want it to bend? If you want to stay, it, the finger to stay stiff, you're gonna use a um, straighter material. If you want that finger to function and be able to bend, you're gonna use a more flexible material, okay? And you can combine materials if you wish. Uh, test different materials and there's no wrong answer to this just play around with it and see what works best for you when you're done fixing your tendon have a think about did it work and if it did work why do you think it worked uh, if it didn't work why do you think it didn't work and if you were to go back and fix that tendon again, what would you do differently? Would you use a different material or would you combine materials? Just think about it and realize how you could fix it better if you were to go back and do the activity again. So that's the end of our talk and how to do the activity. We would love to see pictures of your tendons and hands and the biomaterials you use to fix those tendons. Uh, so email them to us along with any questions you may have uh, to that email address sarah.gundy at nuigalway.ie and I hope you enjoyed uh, the activity and the talk. Thank you for listening. <laughs>